in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, yes, it's no secret, Lord. You are our great and mighty God. Lord, thank you for all your love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for your presence here, now, right now. Thank you that you have given us each day, each moment. And as we gather here together, Lord, again, you teach us every day, you teach us so many things, all the truths. There's a war going on out in the world, Lord, and only your word, Lord, your presence, and only your fellowship can give us a victory, Lord. As you have taught us before, you have given to everybody that currency called time. I say it again and again. Let everyone use that currency to build themselves up by seeking you, Lord, always. Your righteousness, Lord. Everything else you have said will be provided to us. So here we are, Lord, seeking you again and again, seeking your word of life that will destroy all our fear, stress, every work of Satan. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, as you make this word every day more clearer, clearer. And we thank you. There's going to be a lot of manifestations of your glory, Lord, in our lives. Thank you. Make us to be doers and to hear this word attentively and to be doers of it, Lord. Thank you. And praise you, Father, for this in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Joyce. Thank you so much for leading us into that beautiful opening prayer. And my sisters and brothers, a warm welcome to each one of you. You know, today we are going to continue on this topic that we have been studying for the last few days. And you know, we have been studying on the topic of renewing of the mind. And yesterday and the day before yesterday, we were studying on Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And you know, yesterday, we finally came to verse number 2, and we were studying about, you know, renewing the mind. We were thinking, we were studying about how it is so important for us in order for us to be fully effective bearers and of the fruit that will last forever, we need to actually continually renew our mind. So let's just have a quick recap before we go further and let us read verse number two again. Romans chapter 12, verse number two. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, you know, my brothers and sisters, St. Paul in verse number two, he's saying, we should not conform ourselves to this world. We should not conform ourselves to the thinking of this world. You know, if we are thinking according to what the world thinks, we are simply not going to think according to the truth of God's word. You know, when St. Paul says, do not be conformed to this world, you know, it's something like this. If I take probably, you know, a glass of water or, or take any liquid and I put it into a round glass or I put it into a square glass or I just put it into a, a rectangular container, Whatever I put that water into, that's the shape the water is going to take in that particular container. In the same way, when you and I begin to conform ourselves to the world, our thinking is also going to conform according to the pattern of this world. And St. Paul is saying, do not conform yourself according to the world, but conform yourself according to to the truth of God's word. Do not conform yourself to the world, but by the renewing of your mind, let yourselves be conformed to the truth of God's word. And why he's saying this? You know, my brothers and sisters, when we renew our mind, 
not just you know when we are in the bible class now, for example we come to bible class every day some of us go to the church practice every every day maybe we go once a week we are involved you know with different uh, bible classes we are involved with you know hearing the word of god continually but if we are only going to renew our mind when we are at bible class or when we are in church it's not going to help us because we could be conforming ourselves to the word only when we are at bible class or when we are in the church but the word of god says we need to conform ourselves to the word 24/7 every single moment of our life and you know my brothers and sisters what you know what you are thinking right now just think for a moment at this very moment as you are listening your thoughts are right now going on based on what you are hearing now right now i'm saying something to you about renewing the of the mind maybe some of you are probably hearing me but you have got a lot of other things on your mind right now maybe you know you are physically present in this class but there must be so many things you may be probably talking to somebody on the phone maybe it doesn't matter to you maybe somebody in your family may come around next to you and have a chat with you but you know what whatever you choose to think on or whatever you are engaging yourself with is exactly how you are going to think and you know my brothers and sisters right now what words you are going to be speaking if you could speak will be based on what you are thinking right now that's why many counselors i'll give you i'll give you a real secret here many counselors before they can actually provide a solution to anybody you know what a good counselor will do he will simply allow the person to speak from the other side they will try to understand what that person is where that person is coming from what are they talking about because what they are thinking is what they are saying and therefore when they are thinking on a particular thing whether they are thinking negative they are thinking fear they are thinking positive they are thinking you know whatever they are thinking that particular thinking will actually you know manifest itself in the words that you are speaking and so my br brothers and sisters our words bring forth what we are thinking and so we need to check the root what is the root the root is our thoughts and you know when we open our mouths and speak the word the word of god says if you if, if you remember we started this in psalm 103 verse number 20 in psalm 103 verse number 20 it says the angels of god hearken to the voice of the lord let's put that verse you know i want to show you why our words are very important why what we are speaking carries a lot of weightage that's why we need to be so careful with our words but before we talk about the words we simply need to know the root of the problem and that is our thinking so let's go and see what it says bless the lord you his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of his word so what is the psalmist saying here he is saying bless the lord you his angels that excel in strength that do his commandments hearkening unto the voice of the word of his word you know my sisters and brothers the angels are continually hearing the voice of god they are continuously responding to the word to the word of god and praise god god has created human beings in his image and in his likeness and therefore when we put the word on our lips and we open our mouth and speak the word those angels are going to operate but remember you just cannot take the word from the bible or take the word from your notebook and put it in your lips and start speaking it the word needs to be planted in your heart remember we talked about earlier about saying jack and jill and talking about all our nursery rhymes even though we are old enough some of the nursery rhymes we still remember why because we studied those nursery rhymes by heart those words have been planted on the soil of our hearts and as a result we can recall those words any time in the same way when we put the word of god on the soil of our hearts the words that are going to come out of our mouth are actually what is planted in the soil on the soil of our heart and if we receive that word with understanding now my brothers and sisters those angels are going to work for you 
But if you are, and I are going to open our mouth and speak the facts, what the doctor says, what I'm feeling right now. Many, some of you may right now may not be feeling in a good mood. You know, some of us may be feeling in a very bright mood right now. That's why you're excited to say something. You're excited to sing. You're excited to speak words of encouragement. But if you are thinking negative, your words also will be negative. You will always be, you know, always speaking your facts. And when you speak negative things, angels are not going to pick up those words. It is the devil who's going to pick up those words and he's going to bring that word to pass. So brothers and sisters, it is so very important for us what we are thinking right now. We even studied yesterday, Psalm 23, verse number seven. Can we put that please? Psalm 23, verse number seven. It talks about, it. the psalmist says, what a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Let's read that. Psalm, what, Psalm, uh, Psalm 23, verse number seven. Proverbs, sorry, sorry. Proverbs 23, verse number seven. You know, the, 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 in, in the book of Proverbs, it says, what a man thinks in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, said he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. So the, the proverb uh, in the book of uh, some, uh, Proverbs 23, verse number seven, it is saying, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So, brothers and sisters, what I'm thinking on the inside or what I'm thinking in my mind is based on what I have planted inside. Now, I can meditate on God's word or I can meditate on my problem. That's the, that's the freedom that God has given us. And you know, my brothers and sisters, it is not just a, a matter of you know, meditating on the word of God when we are in Bible class when we are in church or when we go to, a, a, to you know, to, to, to hear the word of God. The word should be meditated day and night. I want to take you again to another verse in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8. Again, in Joshua chapter 1, verse number 8, God was talking to Joshua and he said, I want you to meditate on the word day and night because then only you are going to have good success. Let's read that. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So, brothers and sisters, it is not God who is going to give us success. Many people are praying, God, give me that job. God, give me good success. God, give me healing. You know, sister and brothers, God is not the one who is going to give us that success. It is when we begin to meditate on the word of God day and night, and then we do what the word says, then we are going to make our way prosperous and have good success. You know, most of the time, People are looking to the heaven, whereas heaven is looking to earth for people to believe the word so that they can receive what Jesus has already accomplished for you and me on the cross. And therefore, brothers and sisters, it is our words that decides exactly whether those angels are going to work for us. And you know, our words bring forth whatever is in our heart and therefore we need to check the root. We need to check our thoughts. Because what we are speaking will always come based on what we have planted inside. And when we open our mouth and start speaking against the word, when we start speaking against the faith of God's word, now we will never see God kind of results. But when we open our mouth and start speaking the word because we have understood the word which we have planted in our heart, now brothers and sisters, we are going to see the success, we are going to see the glory. Now you know my brothers and sisters, many a times, do you know that when you and I receive bad news, if we keep silent, you know, it is much better. Do you know why? Many a times we can receive bad news. Maybe, you know, the doctor will we go to a doctor for a checkup and the doctor will say, you know, you got an X, Y, Z sickness. You got this particular problem. You got this, 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 this happening in you. Your blood report, your test reports are not very happy, but unhappy. You know, my brothers and sisters, if you cannot, you know, open your mouth, and reject that, 
you are simply accepting it because what he's going to say is simply going to enter inside of you and when you reach home you'll be sitting in a quiet place maybe two three hours after what the doctor spoke and there'll be tears rolling down your eyes because you are continually meditating on what he said and now you're thinking about your funeral, you're thinking about the people you're going to leave behind, and you're simply going to be in complete tatters. But if you open your mouth at the doctor's place and say, doctor, I know what you're telling me is the facts, but I reject what you're saying because I have a truth with me which says that by the stripes and wounds of Jesus, I'm already healed. And you know, my brothers and sisters, when you and I open our mouth and speak the word to the to that to that doctor, doctor, we can say, yes, you can do what you have to do, but I have a truth which is greater than the facts you're giving me, and I know that I'm already healed. Now, my brothers and sisters, those angels are going to work for you, and you are going to see God's glory in your life. But you know, my brothers and sisters, if we keep our mouth silent, when we have to open our mouth, we are going to let things inside. And again, if you cannot open your mouth and say anything positive, you cannot open your mouth and speak your faith, you will do better by just staying silent than opening your mouth and speaking the, the lies of the devil or speaking the facts. You know, my brothers and sisters, we can lose or win. Listen to this very carefully. We can lose or win depending on what words we prefer to speak because the words or the facts, we can actually decide whether we are going to operate in faith or we are going to operate in fear. Remember, when you speak the facts, you are surely going to get into fear. When you open your mouth and speak contrary to the facts, which is the truth of God's word, you are simply going to operate in faith and faith will always give you and me the victory. It will always allow you and me to receive what Jesus has already accomplished for us on the cross. Now, you know, my brothers and sisters, the day we were born again, listen to this, the day we were born again, the day we accepted Jesus as our Lord, God and Savior, we received this ability with the help of the Holy Spirit to draw out from our, you know, from, from within all this power and then have it on the outside. You know, what is the use if we are born again and have all the fullness of God on the inside, but we are never using it. It's something like this, my brothers and sisters, a person is very rich, they've got a lot of money in the bank, but they will never go to the bank and withdraw it. They are only sitting at home and they are only saying, I'm hungry, I'm in need, I'm thirsty, I don't know how I'm going to make it. You know, my brothers and sisters, I don't think many of you would be very happy to hear a story of a person like that who has got the resources, who's got the money, but is simply not going to the bank and withdrawing that money, but living in poverty and living in hunger. And that is exactly the situation of a person who's born again, who's got all this power on the inside, but is not drawing out the power on the outside. And you know, my brothers and sisters, God's will is that we are not only changed on the inside, but he wants to manifest the salvation in our physical lives as well. You know, God wants this power for us to grow outside so that we can see the glory of what is already on the inside also on the outside. And that will only take place through the renewing of our mind. Remember, my brothers and sisters, if you are not going to renew your mind, if you're not going to, you know, uh, you know, make that, take that labor of renewing your mind, what is the use of coming to Bible class, listening to the word, and as soon as the Bible class is over, you close your Bible, you go to your different, you know, situations of your life, and you are living a defeated life. It's simply not going to be useful for you coming to Bible class because what you are learning, you are not putting it into practice. You know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes, you know, people get offended when, 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 you know, when the preacher or somebody is going to tell them this direct statement. They say, why are you making such a big fuss about, you know, that after the Bible class? I know because I'm coming to Bible class, I'm blessed. Because I'm coming to Bible class, God is going to bless me. No, God is not going to bless you because you come to Bible class. God is going to bless you only when you put into practice what you learned at the Bible class and you renewed your mind after you left the Bible class so that that word which you, by which you renewed your mind, you spoke the word and those angels came to your rescue and started working for you. They brought everything to pass in your life. And you know, my brothers and sisters, just to give you a recap again about, you know, 
what this really being born again is. You know, each of us, we have a spirit. We are a spirit being. You know, all of us are a spirit being, every single person. And we have, a, as a spirit beings, we have a soul that lives in a body. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23. We can go there. We can put that scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. It says, we are a spirit having a soul that lives in a body. Now, brothers and sisters, as born again believers, our spirits, as I said, are perfect. And they will be perfect forever as they will be always be in heaven. Remember, the day you were born again, your spirit became the same as the spirit of Jesus Christ. And therefore, they will be perfect even afterwards. That's what it says. Look at, look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so what is St. Paul telling the Thessalonians? He's saying that, you know, your whole being, that is your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, my brothers and sisters, there is a day when the Lord Jesus Christ was returned. Right now, as we are born again, our spirit is perfect, but the renewing of the mind allows us to draw from our spirit so that our soul, our thinking, our emotions, our feelings, our decision-making, our choosing will all be based according to the word of God. And so, now that God has done his part of you know, changing us in our spirits, it becomes our labor or our effort to renew this mind so that this mind can draw what is on the inside of us. And know, my brothers and sisters, if we will change our thinking, listen to this, if we change our thinking so that we believe what God says in his word about who we are and who we can, you know, we, who, who, who he wants us to be, then this agreement between our spirits and our souls will become a majority. Remember, we are a spirit being having a soul that lives in a body. So when the spirit and the soul agree, the body becomes in the minority. And therefore now, what the soul has agreed with the spirit will begin to manifest in the body and the body will begin to experience healing. We will begin to experience prosperity. We'll begin to experience wholeness. We'll be, experience, be able to experience the abundant life that God has promised us. So if you are going to want to experience the abundant life that Jesus promised us in John 10, 10, what must we do? The first thing is we need to believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be born again. Once we are born again, we need to labor to renew this mind, to think on the word, so that as we think on the word, we are able to draw from our spirit. And now the spirit and the soul are in majority. And now our flesh will begin to experience the life of God, which has already been deposited in our spirit. I hope my brothers and sisters, you are understanding this. Remember, what is the use of just being a born again believer and living in poverty, living in sickness, living a defeated life, living, you know, in lack. It simply doesn't match together. But the moment you have accepted Christ, you have all this power already on the inside of you. You need to labor by studying the word, by renewing your mind with the word. And now you begin to draw that from your spirit. Now your spirit and your soul are in majority. Automatically, your flesh, that is your body, is now going to experience the life of God. And you are going to experience everything that Jesus has already finished in your spirit because he's lying there. And now we will begin to experience the abundant life. And when we experience the abundant life, there'll be an overflow which will now result in we bearing fruit of the kingdom. But you know, my brothers, and sisters, if we fail to renew our minds, we can live our entire life, our entire time on this earth without experiencing the abundant life that Jesus provided us. What did he say in John 10.10? 10? Let us go to John 10.10. 10. You, know, you know, my brothers, and sisters, many of us want to live an abundant life. I'm sure there is nobody on this planet Earth who doesn't want to experience the joy, that peace, all the, all the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Nobody wants to live a life which is defeated. Nobody wants to live a life in sickness. But the solution is already been given to us by the word of God. 
What is the solution? Let us read that. What Jesus has come to give us in John 10:10. 10, 10. The thief cometh, cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. So Jesus is saying in John 10:10, 10, 10, he's saying that the thief comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That is the job of the devil. And how is the thief going to kill, steal, and destroy? When we open our mouth, when we open our mouth and speak the facts, when we open our mouth and speak what the doctor says, we open our mouth and speak what the government says, we open our mouth and speak what he said and she said. But when I open my mouth and start speaking the word of God, because I've renewed my mind and I've agreed with my spirit, now my brothers and sisters, when I open my mouth, those angels are going to operate for me and I'm going to now begin to live an abundant life because it blesses God to see his children living an abundant life. So let's go back to Romans chapter 12, verse number two. We got still a, some things more to learn in Romans chapter 12, verse number two. This was only a recap of what we studied yesterday. So let's go back to verse number two. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So yesterday, my brothers and sisters, we studied and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is exactly what we studied yesterday and we just recap. Then what he says, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God that you may prove. You know, my brothers, says, what is the meaning of the word prove? What is the meaning of the word prove? Prove means, you know, the, I would say to establish the truth or validity of, of by, by, say, by an argument or by some evidence. You know, supposing you've got a particular, uh, some, some particular event took place. And somebody at that time recorded, they had a video recording of that. Somebody says, you know, at this particular time, this thing happened, this thing happened. And they are not speaking the truth. They are not telling the facts. The moment somebody shows that video recording, the video recording will actually prove what actually happened. And if that video recording has also got an audio, that audio and that video will match together and will show that what really happened and what really transpired can be proved by means of that video. And therefore, my brothers and sisters, this particular proving here in verse number to a, uh, Roman chapter 12, verse number two, is speaking of how to physically display God's will in our lives. That's what St. Paul is saying. How can you bring this God's will or how can you start bearing fruit in your life? You know, my brothers and sisters, we, we studied that in John chapter uh, 15, verse number 16. We saw that God is the one who chose us. We did not choose God, but he chose us in order to bear fruit. So if he chose us to bear fruit, then this verse is speaking of how we can physically display God's will or God's purpose. Now let's go to John chapter 15, verse number 16. This is a verse that we are going to keep repeating for a very long time because it's all talking about bearing fruit. And in the last few weeks, brothers and sisters, we have had this one goal in mind, how to bear fruit, what are the impediments to bear fruit, what are the struggles to bear fruit, what are the challenges to bear fruit, and what are the ways by which we can actually start bearing fruit. So let's read this, John chapter 15, verse number 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever you shall ask of the father in my name he may give it to you so brothers and sisters if john chapter 15 verse number 16 where jesus is talking he says he has called us to bear fruit we have we have been chosen to bear fruit then Roman chapter 12, verse number 2. Let's go back there. Roman chapter 12, verse number 2, where he says, you will prove, he says, look at what he says, that you may prove what is that good 
an acceptable and perfect will of God. The perfect will of God, my brothers and sisters, for you and me, is that first and foremost, we are saved. And after we are saved, we are simply going to produce the fruit through that relationship that we have with our Father through His, through his Word and the Holy Spirit. So, brothers and sisters, this verse is actually teaching us how to fulfill the requirements. I mean, how to, you know, to display what God's will is in our life, how to bring that will, will of God in our life to come to pass. And this is a promise that if we fulfill the requirements of these two verses in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, then we will prove, not we might prove, listen, we might not prove, we will prove the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So what I want to do right now is, Melanie, I want you to read verses 1 and 2 again, because when we put verses 1 and 2 again, now we will be able to fulfill the requirements. When we fulfill the requirements of these two verses, now we will be able to prove to God that we can start producing the fruit of the Spirit. We can produce the fruit that God wants for each one of us. Let's read those verses again together. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, my brothers and sisters, finding God's will for our lives is not hard when we do what these verses are instructing us to do. Let me say this again. When you begin to do the instructions of these two verses in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, you and I will find God's will for our lives. We will be able to fulfill the very purpose that God has put us in his life. You know, my friends, if you search the whole New Testament, you know, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, are actually the two verses that will bring, you know, purpose, that will bring, you know, fulfillment of the very purpose God has put into our life. And we will be able to do what God has put us on this earth for. For example, you know, my brothers and sisters, if this is a phone, you know, this is an iPad right now I'm holding. If it is probably a phone, okay? And if this phone is now being manufactured by a particular company for a particular purpose, for a particular application, then only the manufacturer knows why this phone has been manufactured for this particular specification and for this particular model. In the same way, God has made us for a particular purpose. We cannot be somebody else. We cannot try to imitate somebody else. We should not even try to be somebody else. We should be the best version of what God has made us for. And how will we know that? We will only know that when we take Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 together and follow those instructions which are given in Romans chapter 12, verse 2. You know, as a matter of fact, my brothers and sisters, it would be impossible to miss God's will once we commit ourselves to God by, as a, by making our body as a living sacrifice and now begin to renew our mind. There are two things involved in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. One is, verse number 1 talks about the presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice. So the moment you present your body as a living sacrifice, you surrender to the, to the Lord, you go up a white flag and you hold the flag to the Lord and you say, Lord, this is no more my life, it's your life. I'm surrendering to you, whatever you want me to do. So that becomes the first step. But then what is the use of just surrendering to the Lord if you're not going to renew your mind based on the word of God? So you need directions as well. So once you offer your body as a living sacrifice and now you begin to renew your mind based on God's word, then my brothers and sisters, you and I will never miss God's will in our life. We will be able to fulfill the very purpose God has created you and me. And you know, my brothers and sisters, finding God's will for our lives only becomes hard if we are not totally committed to God. Remember, if we are not committed to God's will, certainly we will never be able to find that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, you know, many people, my brothers and sisters, including myself at one time, 
I used to think that, you know, based on what I'm doing at my workplace, to my service in the church, to, you know, my ministry work, that's how I'm going to be doing God's will in my life. But you know, sisters and brothers, when you revisit these two verses in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, there are simply two things that we need to focus on. One is, I need to make my body as a living sacrifice. No more my life. I'm not going to be the one who calls the shot. Let him call the shot because he's the Lord. So first and foremost, I'm going to offer my body as a living sacrifice. The second thing is, I'm going to renew my mind based on the word of God. You know, my sister and brothers, once I begin to reach that stage where I'm going to renew my mind based on God's word, God's will certainly, which is good and acceptable and perfect, will come to pass in my life. You know, it is also true, my brothers and sisters, that people don't immediately, you know, uh, you know, um, they, they don't move immediately into everything that God has for them. It doesn't happen overnight. It's always going to be a process. There is going to be growth into the things of God. Many times people get frustrated. I, I myself had reached a stage in my life earlier once when I got into the word of God. I said, God, why is my life not changing? Why am I not trying to, you know, start being able to share the word? Why am I not able to, you know, explore myself? And as I began to realize through these two verses, it is a process of transformation. It's a process of growth. And you know, my brothers and sisters, one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is long suffering. It is called as patience. If you want to simply want to, you know, move faster than what God wants to move into your life, it will never bring success. That's exactly what happens to, you know, in the parable of the, of the sower and the seed. Remember, in the parable of the sower and the seed, the second, the, the, the second soil was the rocky soil. The first soil was along the pathway. The second soil was the rocky soil. And what happened? In the rocky soil, because there were rocks there, the, 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 the seed could not grow downward. So there was no good root system. It simply sprung up so quickly. But the moment there was a wind, the moment the scorching sun came, that plant simply collapsed. That plant simply died. Why? Because the root system was not good. And therefore, brothers and sisters, it is important for us to start growing in our root system. You know, we need to get rooted and grounded in the word of God. How are we going to get rooted and grounded in the word of God? By continually meditating the word of God day and night. You know, my brothers and sisters, it's not hard. It's not difficult. As long as we are born again and we have the spirit of God within us. Because it is the Holy Spirit who is going to help us and assist us in order to renew the mind. If somebody wants to renew their mind without the help of the Holy Spirit, there are so many people, you know, they talk about positive thinking, you know, people of this world who, are, who don't know Christ, they have written a lot of books. There are a lot of secular books about positive thinking. But you know, sister and brother, the danger about positive thinking is you will simply do it for a period of time. You will do it with your own willpower and eventually you will burn out, you will be exhausted, you will be mentally drained and you will do it for a month, you may do it for a year, you may do it for a couple of years, but at the end of it, you will simply be burnt out. But the moment you are born again, the moment you are blessed with the Holy Spirit, the, you know, the free gift of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in us is going to assist us in order to renew this mind with God's word. Because he's the one, he says, go, go right, go left, stop, wait, don't move. You know, I'm going to show you the way. I'm going to show you which direction to take. And when that happens, my brothers and sisters, the growth in our life is going to take place in, in you know, in, it's going to take place in the things of God in, in, a, in, a, in a phased manner. It won't take in all at once because if God is going to take you from step one to 10 in seconds, that is going to be a wreck. You know, if you're driving a car and if you want to go from zero to hundred and you want to reach, you want to go to zero to hundred in, in, in two seconds, that will, car will be a wreck. It will always go from 0, then 10, 20, 30, 40. Even an aeroplane, when it has to take off on the runway, it simply picks up speed till it has reached that certain momentum before it can take off. In the same way, my brothers and sisters, we need to take off when we are getting rooted and grounded in the world by the continually renewing our mind. It's a process. We should never get frustrated because God he also desires that we will bear fruit in our life and he knows when exactly the Holy Spirit will be there for us to guide us and lead us and direct us in that path so that we reach that place 
where from 30 and then 60 and 100, we can bear the fruit of the kingdom. You know, my brother and sister, this verse, you know, this verse, especially we are talking about Roman chapter 12, verse number two, is a wonderful promise that we can prove God's will in our life. Look at what he says again, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the first step is to make a total commitment in our lives to, to the Lord. And how do we do that? By being a living sacrifice. That's what he says in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He says, present your body as a living sacrifice. So once you make that commitment to the Lord that you are going to be a living sacrifice, once you make that commitment to the Lord that you, it's not going to be your life anymore, and you're going to say, just like Paul said, it's no more I who live, but Christ living in me. That's where did he say that? Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Can we go there, please? Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. St. Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but Christ living in me. And you know, my brothers, that should be our prayer as well. Right now, we are talking about the first step in order to make a total commitment to the Lord. Let's read that. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I but Christ liveth in me. Amen. So he's saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ living in me. You know, my sister and brothers, if you and I can make this our prayer every single day of our life, when we say, Lord, first and foremost, I want to make a commitment. It's no more my life. It's no more my wishes. No more my desires. It's no more my comfort. It's all what you want me to do. And the moment I make that commitment, the moment I make myself available to the Lord, the moment I say to the Lord, Lord, I'm going to offer my body as a living sacrifice. I want to give this full commitment to you. That's the time, my brothers and sisters, you have taken the first step to make a total commitment to the Lord. Actually, this is the will of God for all of us. Many people think, you know, this is the will of God only for a few people like the preachers and all that. But brothers and sisters, this is supposed to be the will of God for every believer of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, my brothers and sisters, our vocation is not the primary thing. We saw that on the first day when we talked about it in verse number one. Many people think it is our vocation that is actually the one that is helping us to fulfill God's will. Our vocation is secondary. God's will for our life, for all of us, is to be a living sacrifice to him. The moment you commit yourself to the Lord by being a sacrifice, you have done step number one. And once that is accomplished, more specific directions will come to us as we begin to renew our mind with his word. And then we shall be able to produce the fruit that is going to last forever. Amen. Remember, the first step is make a total commitment to the Lord. Make yourself a living sacrifice. Don't you ever come to the Lord and say, God, I want this, I want that. I, I, you know, I've got a great plan, Lord. I want to start a project and I want you to bless it. Remember, my brothers and sisters, you don't make those plans and tell the Lord to bless it. Most of the time, people, the religious church will teach you, you know, you just think what you want. Make a big, big plan. Then you come before the Lord, ask the Lord to bless it. Bring one preacher, let the preacher pray over it and let them bless it and it will be a great success. And then when they find out that it's a failure, they will start blaming the preacher. They will start being, you know, uh, they will be, uh, you know, virtually offended at God. God, why didn't you bless my plan? I was trying to do this, you know, for all this good. Did God in the first place call you for that? He never called you for that because you did not even take it from the word. You did not renew your mind with the word. So the first step, my brothers and sisters, is not to make plans and ask God to bless it. The first step is make a commitment to be a living sacrifice. First and foremost, period. The moment you make yourself a living sacrifice, the next step is renew your mind based on the word of God. And as you begin to renew your mind with the word of God, we will receive specific directions which will come as we renew our mind and then we will be able to produce the fruit uh, that will last forever. You know, my brothers and sisters, if we try to find God's vocation, listen to this again. If we try to find God's vocation for us, but don't present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice, then we are, we are, you know, we are going to be, we are going to actually, what I would say is, we are going to abort God's plan. We are going to frustrate God's plan in our life. You know, God doesn't want just our service. 
Many people, you know, today, the religious church has been teaching, you know, you need to come to church, you need to do some service, you need to be in some prayer group, you need to clean the benches, you need to clean the statues, you need to clean the table, you need to clean the chalice, you need to do some service. But you know, my sisters and brothers, God doesn't want our service. He wants us. And once he gets us, he will get our service as well. But the problem is, most of the time, people are focusing on the vocation. Most of the time, they are focusing on what they, are, they can do, how they can reach out. But remember, once you have a commitment to the Lord and you have given yourself 100% to the Lord, and now you have renewed your mind with the word of God, while you are renewing your mind, the spirit of God is going to give you specific instruction. And then, once you are already, you've given your heart to the Lord, he has got your service as well. He has got everything about you. You know, my brothers and sisters, there is another aspect that I want to talk to you about today. There's another aspect which I'm not going to talk in detail today. I'm just going to give you an introduction that we must remember that, you know, in order for us to bear the fruit of the spirit or in order to be effective, this aspect is so very important that we must bear in mind that we must see things in our spirit before we can see them manifested in our flesh or we can see it manifested in our life. What is the meaning of this? You know, my sister and brothers, let me give you an example just to give you an introduction to what I want to tell you because this is all related to Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. You know, I'm going to give you a, a, a real story that took place before we go on to this tomorrow because it's going to take a while. It's going to take probably two, two more sessions at least before I explain this whole thing. There was this particular preacher who had actually gone to somebody to, to, to a particular you know, service where a particular person you know, had these glasses on and they were like cock glasses. They were real thick glasses because this person had a great difficulty in, 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 having, you know, in seeing. And there were many preachers who had prayed over this lady that she had actually you know, decided that it's useless now in order for us to, for her to receive healing because all the preachers who prayed over her, there was nothing that happened to her. Her eyes remained the same. Only the number of her eyes kept uh, of her glasses went on increasing. So she refused to come to in front, but the preacher on that particular day, he spotted her in the crowd and he called her up in front. When he called her up in front, he says to her, I want to pray for you that God is going to bring healing, that you're going to receive healing for your eyesight. Because I saw one of you in the crowd, the Holy Spirit showed me that you are a person who's got such thick glasses, the, the lenses are so thick, they be, I can't hardly see your eyes. So I believe that, you know, you must be having a very high number. And she said to the preacher, she said, you know, there have been so many people who've been praying for me. I have lost faith now in anybody, you know, actually healing me. And as a result, I just came to your service to hear the word of God because I've resigned to the fact that I have to actually start, you know, using the sticker glasses. I really pray that till the end of my days, I will be able to see as much as these glasses get thicker. So the preacher called her in front and he said to her, I want you to take out those glasses and I want you to close your eyes. And he said to her, I'm going to make a prayer for you. I'm going to command that spirit of infirmity to leave you. And I'm going to command healing for your eyes. So as soon as he made her close her eyes, removed the glasses and he prayed for her, he told her, now can you see? So she began to open her eyes. Again, he said to her, close your eyes. I don't want you to open your eyes. Close your eyes. So she closed her eyes. After she closed her eyes, again, he said to her, can you see? As she began to open her eyes, he again shouted at her, close your eyes. I don't want you to open your eyes. The third time he said to her, I want you to start telling me whether you can see. And as she began to open her eyes, the preacher told her, I did not tell you to open your eyes. I want you to start seeing by closing your eyes. I want you to start looking at your, at your, at your surroundings without opening your eyes. Because unless you are able to see from the inside first, you will never be able to see on the outside. You know, my sister and brothers, what was the preacher trying to do? He was simply trying to bring her to an imagination that she is able to see first. You know, my friends and sisters, I don't know whether I've shared this before in this class. You know, many a times people want to have a miracle and they know that the word of God says, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. Yes, 
By the stripes of Jesus, we are already healed. But you know, my brothers and sisters, if I'm only going to open my mouth and go to, you know, like a parent going to say, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. By the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. But I am not, I'm going to act sick. I'm not going to see myself well. That particular healing will never come to pass. My audio and my video must match. My audio and my video must match. And only when my audio and video matches, that's the time I'm going to see the manifestation on the outside. We are talking about bearing fruit. Remember, it's not just a matter of earlier when we talked about opening our mouth and praying the scriptures and asking the angels to work for us. That is very true. But remember, if I'm thinking sick on the inside, but I'm opening my mouth and praying the scriptures, it will never come to pass. If I am opening my mouth and expecting myself to receive a child or expect a, you know, to be pregnant, but I'm thinking that I'm going to be single, I'm losing out of time, I'm going to start... The moment I begin to think on the inside that I'm already holding my baby, I'm already changing my baby's nappies, I'm already putting a pink and, and blue dress, I begin to see it on the inside and I'm opening my mouth and speaking it on through my lips. What I'm speaking and what I'm seeing on the inside is 100% going to pass. You know, my brothers and sisters, I'm going to you know, introduce you to the scripture, which we are going to deal in detail tomorrow, because we are all talking about bearing fruit. Unless I'm able to see the fruit in my own life, it is not going to be at all effective for me to go and give fruit to the people on the outside. I can only give to somebody what I can receive myself. And therefore, if I'm called to bear fruit, and I'm not seeing the fruit of the word of God or the fruit of the spirit in my own life, what can I go and tell others? I'll only be a noisy gong. I'll simply be on the pulpit talking without any conviction. So let me take you to Romans chapter 1, verse number 21. I'm just going to introduce to this, uh, to, this, uh, to this verse. And when we come back tomorrow, we are going to study this verse in detail. I gave you the introduction. And tomorrow, we'll study more in detail. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him, not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Look at what this verse is saying. St. Paul is saying to the Romans, he's saying, because that when they knew God, these are people who have received God, they knew God, they knew his word. They glorified him not. They did not renew their mind. They did not start thinking on the word. They had all this power on the inside. Neither were they thankful. You know, people today, you will find very few people who are really thankful. They are not even thankful to people. They are not even thankful to God. You know, my brothers, they feel that God owes it to them. They feel that people owe it to them. Sometimes people will know by the way they behave, they act in a way that people owe it to them. They, they believe that God owes it to them. Therefore, they are not grateful and they are not thankful. They became vain in their imagination. What is this imagination? This is exactly the example I gave you of that preacher telling this lady to, to start seeing from the inside. And you know, to end that story, finally this lady began to realize that she had to start seeing from the inside. And after she, you know, for the third time, she closed her eyes and the preacher said to her, now can you see? And after a few minutes, she began to say, yes, I can see now. Now he said to her, open your eyes. And when she opened her eyes, she was able to see because she saw it first on the inside. And now she was able to see it on the outside. That's the vain imagination. Brothers and sisters, tomorrow when we come back, we are going to study this in detail. And then it says, their foolish hearts were darkened. Why were their foolish hearts were darkened? Because of all these things. They were not thankful. They had the vain imagination. They never glorified God. They knew who God was, but at the same time, they never glorified him as God. They were not grateful. They were not thankful. They had a very poor imagination. They were only thinking themselves sick. They were only doing prayers. They were only doing religion. They were going to church. They were muttering the scriptures. They were confessing the scriptures, but they were not thinking on the inside. Their imagination was not right and their foolish hearts were darkened. And as a result, they received nothing. They were not able to live the abundant life. Tomorrow when we come back, my brothers and sisters, we are going to study this in detail. We are going to move to a deeper level of our understanding so that we can learn to bear the fruit of the kingdom.
Let us pray. Sister Marcella, let us pray. <clears throat> In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for teaching us not to be conformed to this world, but to renew our mind. Thank you, Jesus, for we are created in your image and likeness. And we have, you have given us to minister, to take over words and bring it into manifestation. Holy Spirit, help us to meditate on the word of God day and night so that we do what the promises say and we are prosperous and successful. Thank you, Jesus, for your love is perfected in us. Yes, Lord. You are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Thank you, Jesus. We are spirit being, and God's spirit is connected to our spirit. And we are led by the spirit of God, not by emotions, feelings, or anything, but by, only by the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. You have given us abundant life, and you chose and ordained us to bear fruit, to do the perfect will of our Father. Thank you, spirit of God. By grace and by faith, we will bear much fruit, and with God, we will gain the victory and trample down our enemies. Thank you, our Father, for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in Christ in the heavenly places. We make this prayer in the holy and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Marcella. Thank you so much. Praise God. Praise God.